and we are live. Well, welcome everybody to Chef's Table. I am super excited that you're here with us today, joining us um, where you can kind of eavesdrop in on a very intimate conversation I'm having with entrepreneurs all over the world. Um, and I do mean this because I am interviewing somebody from Denmark, right? Um, so I'm pretty excited around this, honestly. So, you know, thank you first off for, for joining us live here on, on my YouTube channel as we are, as I'm just, you know, falling in love with interviewing some of the most incredible people I know. And the reason I invited Michelle here today, Michelle Felicia to chat with us today is because I have watched her grow as an entrepreneur. Um, I have seen what she is capable of doing. Um, she came on and first started looking at internet marketing many years ago. And I actually had the privilege of sitting down with her at poolside one time at an event, uh, which was very unique. I don't think we planned that. It just kind of happened that way. But one of the most amazing things about Michelle is her creativity. And she is a unique marketer because she has taken what she's learned over the years and she's applied it to video. And what I love about what Michelle has done is that there isn't a single video marketer that I've come across yet that does what she does with video. And what I think contributes to it or what I actually know contributes to it is her musicality. So she's a dancer also. And what that allows her to do with video is gives it a whole nother dimension to go through, right? One of the highest paid um, roles in movie development is actually the people that score the movie. Those that write the music that, that convey the emotion, the timing and the setup. And while we talk a lot about video branding and I see a lot of people just put videos up there or do Facebook lives, you know, there's something unique about what Michelle does. Michelle Felicia is just, I don't know, I can't even describe it, but watching how she works, watching how she puts together a video, listening to her talk about how to move music through that process. You know, if there was anybody I wanted to learn video branding from, it's from her. And I was so excited when her and her partner, Tracy, put together a video branding course. So I'm just excited to hear where this conversation goes. Thank you, you know, Tom and Jeff for jumping on and listening into this conversation because I'm going to invite you to ask some questions and I'm really going to put, you know, Michelle through the, the ringer on this one because I'm really curious what she's going to share with us um, in this process. So first off, Michelle Felicia, thank you so much for joining me here at Chef's Table today. Thank you for having me. It's the biggest honor ever. <laughs> so I don't know if, if someone watching should know that it's been, what has it been, two and a half or three years since I was over here in Denmark and never met Katrina before, <laughs> ever. Wondering a little bit if, if it was all real or, you know, if I was watching some kind of robot or, you know, I was in a very uh, weird, desperate state at the time. And I was watching these interviews when they were a little different, but basically the same concept. And I was just watching and I was wondering, I wonder if I will ever get this marketing thing right. I wonder if anybody will ever want to interview me. And I was driving around in the ice cream truck, imagining that, that you know, you would interview me. <laughs> and I remembered that today and I was like, oh, that's funny. Mm. So yeah, it truly is a big honor to be here. Yeah, well, I'm super talking excited. about video. Yeah, I guess I'm super excited because you know, first off, I don't know a lot of people that know you, and I, one of the the reasons for the chef table is basically to introduce entrepreneurs to other entrepreneurs. Um, so I kind of want to get a background from you. Like you just mentioned a little bit, you drove an ice cream truck prior to. So really, what was the first spark? What was the first thing? a first moment you realized you wanted to be an entrepreneur or you wanted to take your business online like what what was there for you what was the what kind of pushed that over I guess. yeah so I think it, it it has been coming my whole life and I'm not going to tell my whole life story <laughs> then we can be sitting here a long time without learning about video but um I've just always been a little bit of um I wouldn't say an outcast, but I've always been that person in school that never got good grades and I wasn't really doing well. And um, 
everybody kind of knew that I loved the dancing. I've been dancing ballet since I was uh, three or four years old. And my mom actually bothered to go to the Royal Ballet to try tryouts there because she, I danced before I walked. So she kind of, I think, knew that I was supposed to do something dance. Hmm. Um, and then that didn't really happen because uh, um, it turns out that I wasn't really, you know, it turns out I wasn't stupid. I just wasn't learning the way that, you know, the school system is put together. And so I went through this long thing throughout my 20s where uh, I, I, it's crazy, but I was in university. I don't even know how I got there. <laughs> yeah, didn't fit in there. I was, um, I mean, I was a, a good buddy to all my buddies, but uh, yeah, not a good student. And um, I got away from dancing. And then, um, and I got really overweight actually because I was unhappy with the life that I put myself in. I was, I was in this life that we're supposed to want. Hmm. Um, you know, I was 24. I had a stable boyfriend. Um, he owned an apartment that we were living in. He was in some sort of fancy education. He was almost done. I was in my um, education and, you know, it was all how it was supposed to be. And I was just unhappy eating my way through life, just to say it how it is. And um, finally realized that that was just, that was all wrong for me. And I finally opened up and, and, and admitted that what I really just wanted was to dance, like what I used to do. And I, I, I managed to, to get myself moving in lose the weight and go through dance education and I felt like I had made it and I, I actually moved to Vietnam so at this point I'm 26 I, I live in Vietnam I'm doing what I'm loving dancing mm. no spark of entrepreneurial anything yet but what happened was that um, I was very self-sabotaging which is something I think a lot of entrepreneurs are just working with um, probably sounds familiar to someone watching right now and um, so I, I kind of sabotaged myself, not, not on purpose, but uh, I, I got some mix up with my visa and I got thrown out literally almost from one day to another. I was in the airport. We were on our way to Singapore. It was supposed to be my big break. And in the airport, I get pulled aside and they show me that my visa has actually expired. And I'm like, what? And there's this whole thing and I have a week to uh, basically dismiss my jobs and quit my apartment and sell my things. And I'm back home to, to Denmark in one week after having spent all the money that I didn't have. <laughs> and, um, and, and on top of that, I got, you know, the day after I got home, I got robbed in my home when I was sleeping on my brother's, apart in, on my brother's couch. So that was rock bottom for me. It couldn't get worse. I didn't have any connections in Denmark because I hadn't been very good at keeping connections. So I had no connections to get a dance job here. I had no education other than my dance education, which is not considered an, an education over here. And I had no job. All my stuff had been robbed. I had my clothes and my wonderful, wonderful brother and friends who let me sleep on their couches. And I couldn't see any way back. I couldn't afford to keep in shape. I had to take a very low paying job. I was in debt, very in, in debt. And I think I worked some kind of low paying job for a couple of years and got myself into kind of a depression because I just wanted to dance. Hmm. I didn't want to be rich. I just wanted to, to dance, but you know, I just couldn't see that that would ever happen. I would never be able to pay back my debt. I would never be able to do anything with that job. And so in that desperate search, I found network marketing to begin with, which has been my, what do you call it? Like my um, stepping stone into the entrepreneurial world. And then from there, if anybody has been a network marketer, you might have that same story that, you know, you you thought you had it, you know, you have made it, you have found the thing. And uh, I wasn't a millionaire in a week and I was very disappointed. <laughs> yes, that whole millionaire mindset. For those of us watching, how many of you have had that whole experience with a network marketing? Maybe, maybe not. 
where you, you joined in expecting to make six figures in like 30 days. I mean, they tell you it's easy. Anybody? <laughs> just out of curiosity. Just share yeah. it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Kind of bother. It's, it's almost like a shared experience with us, right? And yeah. really, I want to say just first off, thank you for sharing such an intimate background story. Uh, because I know it's definitely hard to share the ups and the downs. And the downs are typically something we don't talk about online. Yeah. You know, yeah, we I don't, don't talk about very much. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it becomes the conversation we never have. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Which is silly because we're entrepreneurs. Guess how many of us are going to fall flat on our face and have to scrape ourselves back up again? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I basically just, I, <laughs> you know, I did the great thing. I quit my job right away. And so I kind of just <laughs> had three months to make myself successful. So, you know, after a month, I realized that the way I was originally taught in network marketing was not what was going to cut it for me. And so I went online and found ongoing mentorship. And that's, you know, when you enter, that's mm -hmm. when I started seeing you in, in the whole team and started getting these skills that has led me to, to the video eventually. Hmm. Yeah. So what was that like? Cause I, I know that you've gone through a lot of different training, um, you know, and, and uh, Charlotte is with us. So hello, Charlotte. Welcome to Yay. the chef's table. Um, so, you know, you've been through a lot of mentorship. I know that you're somebody that definitely believes in investing in your education, in yourself. Yeah. I mean, you as a dancer, I know you've invested a lot in your education. Heck, I know I invested a lot in my ballroom education. It's not inexpensive sometimes. It's, <laughs> a little, it's definitely a, um, a hobby that... Uh, you know, you're going to pay for, right? But that, yeah. that's one of the things we talk about. We'll share a little bit later on because I'm going to ask you about what it's like to invest in mentorship and what it is, you know, is it worth it and so forth. Um, but I want to really kind of focus in on the video marketing, the video branding, because you kind of out of nowhere, because I, I know for a long time you were doing a lot of Facebook marketing. You had come <laughs> up with some really crazy ideas for your blog. Like, how did this video concept come together for you? She's laughing. So I have this, this has got to be good. I don't want, I want to know what's inside of her brain. <laughs> oh, it's just the way you describe it, because I really was all over the place in the, be <laughs> the beginning. What? You were all over the place? You were like scattered <laughs> everywhere? And it, oh my gosh, I don't think there's a single entrepreneur I know that hasn't had that experience. Exactly. You kind of have to try it all out to find what's your groove, I guess. Um, you know, you know, it's, it's, um, we always say it's a funny story then sometimes it isn't, but it is kind of funny though, because I think um, at least if you try to do Facebook advertising, you're going to find this funny because what happened was that I was learning this Facebook advertising and I saw the big benefit of this, um, you know, um, driving traffic and, and paying to have relevant eyeballs come to your, to your blog. <laughs> and so, uh, we were where I was at at the time we were learning this uh, specific way of doing ads because I was still at the time trying to make network marketing work for me and I was following these guidelines and I just there was a lot of copywriting and I I, I do I, I do find copywriting interesting it's just I'm not a big writer no. I love just talking no. uh, anyone who knows me will not be surprised <laughs> I just love talking. I just, I just, I just want to write there. You know, I don't have the um, patience for sitting down and writing things until they sound like something you would read. Hmm. And so I've been working on this ad and I'd been, I had been working through it. I've been working through the whole process of writing several copies and sticking with the one that was good enough. And, you know, it, it can be a very long process. And I had finally launched the ad and uh, it was, I think it was my third ad at this point. Um, I had taken what I'd learned from the previous ones and then I don't know what I was doing, but I accidentally deleted it. And I don't know how Facebook is now, but at the time, if you deleted an ad, it was almost for certain that you couldn't get it back. So you would have to start all over 
if you wanted that ad. And I, I, ha I had had it running for a few days and I was just waiting for the numbers to be so that I could evaluate this ad. And I was just, I can't tell you the, I mean, the frustration, there would have to be a lot of censoring if you were to fly on the wall because I was swearing all over the place. And I was just, I was frustrated with myself mm -hmm. and with, with, with not really learning this skill as fast as I had hoped I would. Well, that's and another so one. In... So you guys all wait. <laughs> that I, I hadn't learned the skill as fast as I wanted to. I yeah. think like that's like the common <laughs> entrepreneurial conversation I have with everybody. Oh, yeah, I'm we're not where I should patient, be. Right? I'm not where I should like master cop. Like, I want to be like the matrix, right? I can just put a little plug in, <laughs> I put in the information, it downloads, and I'm like there, right? And we all expect that. We do. Yeah. We That's do crazy, right? So and then you're not, not getting the results. Yeah, so I mean there I was. I wasn't getting the results, and I had finally sat down and, and taken, you know, the patience, right? I finally done it, and then I, I felt like I was punishing myself for doing it or something. So in, in total rebel to that, I was like, to hell with this. You know, I'm gonna launch another ad and ad, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna have fun with this. You know, I was just angry. And in my anger, I was just, I'm just going to have fun. And so um, I'm very fond of Snapchat. It's uh, something I have been begging my husband forever to have Snapchat. And he finally got it. And he's being spammed with, you know, filtered videos of all kinds. <laughs> so um, I don't know where the idea came from. I just, I was like, hey, what would happen if I, I, just, I think I just got curious. There's a keyword, right? We mm. get curious. I got oh, curious yeah. and I was like, what would happen if I put a video in there instead of a copy? And what if I made it with some sort of filter because I don't really see anybody doing that, right. you know, and want to stand out, right? So uh, I did that and I, I worked all night. I had so much fun that I stayed up all night. I didn't even realize what time it was. And I launched the ad and when I woke up, usually you can't really tell if it, if an ad will be successful or not, but that was my first ad that already had good metrics from right from the get go. Hmm. Everything was just going, you know, and, and it had even better metrics that than usually you expect from the kind of niche that I was in at the time. So I was like, whoa, and I had fun doing it. You know, I didn't drag myself to write copy or anything. I was just being me. Um, and then the last part of that story is that um, I went to got, get that ad evaluated and I felt like I met a lot of um, resistance and a lot of um, a lot of people that didn't, there, there was a few people that, that helped me with the ad that definitely understood what I was doing, but a whole lot of the, the same people that had just taught me these skills were not seeing that I was using the skills just in my own little twisted way mm. and I and it was clear to me that I was using them but it wasn't clear to them and in the beginning I, I did what you're, what you're not supposed to do I got angry with them I thought what the hey he, why can't they see it yeah I have all these good metrics and this and that and you know and I I really got angry and I I, I even lay awake and I, I remember I was so angry because I just I I couldn't believe it I finally had an ad and then, you know, my, my mentors couldn't see what I saw. And then finally I came down and uh, I mean, you also know Blair Dunkley. I remembered something he said that, you know, when you're emotional, it's kind of hard to evaluate anything. So you gotta, you, you really, I mean, be angry if you may, but you gotta calm down before you sort of judge the situation. Yeah. And then I used, you know, um, what he does to evaluate and I realized oh my goodness it's because I arrived I arrived to a place where I have a vision that is truly mine mm. and because I haven't showed anybody how this works they are not going to see it until I until I you know it's it, it was kind of like the road wasn't there people understood that video was important but not the way I did it so I kind of, um, I just had a little profound moment in all that anger and all that failure of my ad. 
you know, so if you ever fail at something, you know, celebrate it, you know, you might get so angry that you do something that will get you successful. Uh, <laughs> and that that's how it started. And then and, and then I just expanded on everything I had done uh, with the fun thing. And, and I was like, oh, what will happen if I put video, uh, if I put not a video, if I put music on this, what will happen? So I'm going to stop you right here because I want to yeah. make sure that this is recapped. And I, I really want to just kind of highlight for those of you that are, are listening in or those that are catching uh, this later in your day. There are some really key points I want to point out inside of what Michelle just shared with you, right? We are going to have a lot of mentors that we work with that we don't always agree with. It's kind of the name of the game in all honesty, right? Yeah. And there's a lot of mentors out there. I'll tell you that right now there is... Um, <laughs> There's a lot. They pick up a book, go to a bookstore. You're going to see somebody. Have, have any of you guys, and I'm just putting this kind of like in perspective, how many of you guys have ever been to a bookstore and you've gone down to that one aisle where there's a whole bunch of recipe books and there just seems to be like hundreds of recipe books and you're wondering to yourself, how the heck are there that many recipes in the world for, you know, for what we do? And a lot of them, they repeat each other. I, I'm, it's true. Like, you know, there's only so many ingredients in the world. Um, so, you know, the, the one thing is, is that there's a, there's a, there's a world of, there's a lot of similarities and, you know, you're going to run into people. And this is why many of us, and, you know, Michelle, Felicia pointed out perfectly, you know, you're going to test a lot of things as an entrepreneur and you're going to test a lot of things and you're going to get frustrated by a lot of things and you're going to get told different things. And you might even get be told uh, things that are like counterproductive. You're like, but I was told to do this. And now you're telling me to do this. Like, which one's right? <laughs> Anybody have that conversation, right? So with Michelle, there's also the sense of I'm going to prove them wrong, right? Yeah. <laughs> there, no, there is. But you yeah. know, I will tell you this, the Every entrepreneur book that I've ever read, every success story, every person that breaks through that ceiling is the one um, that says, I don't agree with you and I'm going to try it this way anyhow, right? Entrepreneurs don't walk the same path as everybody else. They tend to forge their own. And inside of that, people see that, that, that new path being created and now they want to follow them because it's something outside the norm. When you talk about how do you stick out in the sea of sameness, you have to be willing to do what others won't. And Michelle Felicia did something that others didn't see yet because I, I know copyright works. We, we've known it for years, ad copy works, but your written word works, right? But what Michelle saw, what even I, I know for myself is I'm better at speaking. Sometimes conveying those words to be written is definitely a struggle and a time suck. I'm just gonna say it out loud. Writing is a time suck. <laughs> not that it's not needed, right? But there is an, a way to convey emotion and a point across very, you know, very quickly through video. And I really wanted, you know, for you to point out that if you're somebody that's like, you know, I keep being told I can't do this or that's not the way to do this, that might be your opportunity to shine. That might be the direction in which you go. Would you agree? Yeah, I tell so, that to students of mine all the time. You know, yeah. please, please do prove me wrong. I get it wrong too. I mean, yeah, well, but you've made mistakes. Like you said, you know, you started off with the video. I love the fact that you said I got pissed off because this ad closed down. <laughs> it's almost like a blessing in disguise, right? It's like, oh, <laughs> F you all. This is just, you know, whatever. This is somewhat like a PG 13 show, just so you know, there might be a few swear words dropped every now and then. <laughs> Um, it's not kid approved by YouTube at all. So just so in case you're wondering, YouTube does have an element that asks if this is kid appropriate. My answer is no. <laughs> so, um, inside of that, but you know, that this is, um, yeah, uh, well, even Heather, oh, Hey Heather, how are you? So Heather jumped down. We tend to forge our own, like being outside the norm, right? We skate the edge of what everybody thinks we should do. And I think that's really what makes us unique as entrepreneurs. Yeah. So you got into video branding, you started testing with um, ads, and then you kind of started testing video elsewhere. And like all of a sudden, the next thing I know, you're collaborating to build a video marketing course or video branding course. Because you actually said you don't want to teach marketing, you want to teach 
branding. Yeah. So what is branding? Yeah, so I think for um, for myself as well in the beginning and for a lot, you know, that is um, a, what do you call it? Like it's a, a um, not defined. Yeah, it's really kind of like blurry. An unknown. Yeah, it's for most people, it's kind of blurry. It's like, what what is branding? And in, in, um, I, I just, for me, I made it really simple. I'm sure that there are plenty of, actually, there are plenty of descriptions of what a brand is. But for me, it's, um, it's how you're being seen by other people, basically. So, I mean, everybody has a brand regardless if you were working on it on purpose or not, but everybody has a brand and it's your reputation. 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 I'll give you that word. Yeah, for you. I know English is your second language. We're good. <laughs> it's my third. So no, third, okay, okay. I'll, I'll give you that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's your, it's, it's your reputation. It's like, it's how people are seeing you. What mm-hmm. are they remembering when you're not there? What, what are they thinking about when they think your name or your brand? You know, you may have a co- corporate brand, but then still, what are people saying? What are they thinking? What do they relate to you? And it's really all about the people you talk to. It's about what you're standing for and what you're standing against. It's a little simplified, but basically mm-hmm. that is what it is yeah, for me. I- I know, and I agree because even Jeff said in here, it's like, you know, there's always the basics that run in the background. Like there's the basics of, basics of marketing. There surely are. There's the basic five principles of marketing. They haven't changed in decades. It still works today, but it's what are you bringing to the table? Yeah. And another way I've heard the brand described, it's like, it's your promise. Yeah, that's a great uh, way to say it. You know, your brand is your promise. Is like, how are you going to show up? So, you know, we've got you know, Charlotte on here, that's a real estate agent, right? So if she shows up as a real estate agent and she stays consistent with that over time, she's actually getting and creating for herself a reminder to people that this is what she does, right? A lot of times as we we build our brand and marketing online, we don't actually tell people what we do, (laughs) right? That's so, and if we don't tell people what we do, then the question is like, well, so what do you do for a living? It's like, uh, uh, yeah. Right. So I think part of our branding comes from us understanding exactly what it is we do. And who it is we help. I, for yeah. me, that's, yeah. So when I say that it's part of, part of your brain is actually who you're talking to, because, you know, if I, if I'm talking to you, I'm talking one way and I might mm-hmm. highlight certain things of my brand or my personality. If I were talking to someone um, very different, I'm, I might highlight some other things because we all have these you know, we're, we're all, you know, this whole person, this whole yep. brand, there are plenty of things to communicate out there to the world, but, but you choose things because of the people you're talking to and because of what you can help them with. Mm. So for me, that's an important part of your brain. It's actually who you choose to talk to. So when we talk about who you're talking to, and we're talking about video, Right. We talked about, you know, now you've kind of defined or at least given us an idea of what a brand is. And I and I've seen everything from a brand. I mean, a lot of the times people ask me what, what my brand is. And I say, well, it's a chef coat. Shockingly, it's one of the it's the it's an image dev- defining thing for me. Right. Uh, sometimes it can be a color. I've seen people use a specific color in all their marketing. And that color is that when people see it, they kind of make a, a an association it, like it triggers something in their mind. Right about what we do yeah so now when you take that to video I mean how many of us honestly how many of us love getting live on camera (laughs) not that many people I I love it actually but yeah Yeah, I do too but I will tell you like well I like interviewing people Uh, typically what I struggle with is just sitting there by myself and just speaking to a bunch of people on Facebook with nobody there I will say that I don't mind being on video, but I like being on video with somebody else or a few other people. Yeah. Um, so doing it myself kind of, and all honesty, I'll just be straight with you. It, it still feels a little awkward to me. Like there's nothing worse for me than going live on Facebook. Cause I feel like I'm like, oh my God, I'm talking to myself. Right. I'm talking to that camera again. What am I doing? 
Yeah. Like, is anybody <laughs> even listening? Right. So I know we hear about, um, you know, how important video is. And I know, I mean, for crying out loud, I was, I went through a video workshop a few years back, paid, I think three to $4,000 to spend two days locked away with, you know, a phenomenal YouTube marketer. And, um, you know, even back then they said, you know, by 2020, hi, we're in 2020, you know, everybody's going to be watching video all the time. I mean, and we're starting to see the trend. I'm, I'm definitely saying that we're going to see the trend. The kids are starting to head this direction. Uh, they're watching YouTube more than they're watching regular television. So I'll actually argue that we are there, you know, yeah. we, we're there. This is kind of, um, I mean, there, there's going to be a development, but as the way I see it, we're peaking now, mm. which also, by the way, which I think is very interesting is that that requires something else when you're doing video. You know, it requires more because everybody is doing video now. So you have more competitors when you're putting a video out. Mm. And, and I, th I think that's also one of the reasons that I started doing something else because I put, could have put a, a, a live video in my ad, but I didn't because already at that time, I didn't see live video as the big thing anymore mm. because everybody's doing live video and they had their place. I'm not saying that it's completely, you know, that's outdated. What are you doing? But it just, it, it has its place. But I've talked, um, I had a very interesting um, conversation with a couple of um, entrepreneurs who have actually had a lot of success with doing just live videos, well, mm -hmm. almost just live videos. And even though they've had so much success, they're seeing a decreasing rate of viewers and it's it, that they're afraid that it's no longer the most effective way for them to um, talk to their cold market. Mm the people that don't know them yet. Right. Yeah, so uh, I like how you said that though. And I, I want you guys to listen in on this because there's there's nuggets in here and I'm gonna try to pull out the nuggets that Michelle said. <laughs> but she even said, so when she created this ad, I think it was probably over a year ago, right? For this yeah. one that you did for video. It's been a, well over a year. Now I'm telling you guys right now, she's she's not off. Is it about one two and years? Half year. year and a half? Year and a half. So yeah, so almost, we're talking a year and a half, 18 months ago. Michelle saw the writing on the wall that live video was going to diminish. You guys, there's always a point of diminish. There's always a point of peak. Any of you guys that are running Facebook ads, guess what we've hit? The peak. There's only so many places that Facebook can place ads. I mean, every time I scroll down three Facebook posts, there's an ad. Three. I mean, if it's going to be every other one, oh my God, I might never ever be on Facebook ever again. Seriously. Yeah. Right? So the fact that you saw something, you know, and this is true for anything, it's like, there's going to be a point of everything's going to hit a peak. And where do you want to be on that journey? Do you want to be at the top of that peak? And I'm talking to, <laughs> Charlotte's going to relate to this one. Do you want to be at the top of the peak when the, before it crashes, right? If you're a real estate agent, you know, do you want to be at the top of your game and your podcast, you know, before it all peaks? Like, where do you want on the journey is? And I know it sounds stupid and corny. I know I get it. Everyone's like, oh my God, you got to get in before you get saturated. And I will always say there's never a true saturation. The yeah. market will always make room for you. But there is a point where there's limited resource or space available. And you have to be aware of that as a marketer, right? So you talked about video kind of live becoming a peak. And I do actually think that um, pre-done video, like what you're doing right now with the video branding, Right, because you're using, so tell me about a tool that you're using and I'll make sure for those that are watching, if you're watching this down in the description, any of the tools that Michelle mentions will be listed down there just so that you can click and have access to them. So you're creating all these videos and I know for a fact, I love videos. Um, and I know they can be time, time to stitch together to edit, to do that kind of thing. So what have been some of your favorite tools for editing video or even putting them together? I mean, the, the biggest, the main one, I'm, I'm actually using a couple, but the main one, the biggest one where I kind of um, gather everything I've done is wave.video, um, which is, is based online um, at the moment. I think they're working on an app, but it's, it's not so much an app on your phone. It's a little bit more um, of a big, editing program online um, that you can subscribe to every month. But then 
uh, I'm always on the lookout for, you know, what people, what other people are doing and what's, what else is out there. And I've been playing around with a fun app called, um, I, I don't know how to correctly pronounce it, but Kine, Kine Master, K-I-N-E Master. I'll take you on that one. Sounds good to me. It's <laughs> it's a uh, it's um they have some they have some fun stuff in there and it's very easy to use and they keep updating funny little things like uh, if funny effects that you can do where stars come across the screen or you you can do all sorts of weird funny little things but but it's just when you're talking it may sound silly because I know that's the kind of that's that's the biggest objection sometimes I get when I talk about these things. It's like, okay, but isn't that a little silly if I'm this, you know, serious business person and then you know I have stars coming across? But it's a moment of surprise. It's where you can really build a connection because if the people you're talking to are the kind of people that would be like <gasps> they put stars in the video, you know, and then you just build, just by those silly little starts, you just build a better connection. And you know what? I'm going to point out something to you. There's only two reasons people ever come to the internet. Two. Two. And you know both of them, right? Yep. They're education and entertainment. The person that blends them both together, <clears throat> Felicia, uh, um, <laughs> um, I don't know which side she's on, so I'm going to pull either way. Um, but the person or the business that does this the best is going to become memorable for their audience. It, it's, it's just, um, it's, uh, God, how many commercials back in the day? So Super Bowl is coming up. Right, Super Bowl the, here in the states, it's a big, you know, football commercial sport things. Only yep. reason I watch them now, having become a marketer, the only reason I ever watch them is for the commercials. You know why? I want to find the commercial that makes me laugh. I know I'm looking for the ones that make me laugh. Usually, that that event inspires some of the best humor or emotional type of commercials that we will ever see for the remainder of the year. It Ooh. happens that one time. So it's like there is um, companies like Budweiser, which is a, a beer brewing company out here on the in the states, right? They've built out some incredible. I've seen humor. If everyone remembers the Three Frogs, I mean, they had a teaser video before they actually released the video for that Super Bowl event day, right? They've done great. Emo yeah, they had what was they had four, three That's frogs so sitting on lily pads, and they would go Bud wise and then the last guy was go err but the only part that you saw was this err at the end or the first one i think was bud so you just saw this frog sitting on a lily pad and he just kept saying bud over and over <laughs> again and you're like what the heck is this and it was no branding there was no anything it was just right this really weird commercial that was like 15 seconds right it was just ridiculous and then it led into something else right when we have those and they've done ones with Clydesdales they've ones that I mean gosh there was one that was like a tearjerker um it was in like a commemorative type of one and I mean I don't think there was a dry eye after that commercial happened right and it's because you learn to tell the story and the reason I share this is because when I listen to you talk about how you put together video and you use those little funny little things and those little humor things you know if anything that's what makes us stand out everybody does the standard I'm, you know, Facebook live, like I'm here, it's me, blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah. right. Just a quick, can I just squeeze in a quick little tip? It's very quick. No, if you are doing live show. videos, just if you really want to do yourself a favor, if you're talking to a cold audience, I'm not talking about the ones that you're doing for an audience that really wants to come say hello and how are you doing? But if you're going for a cold audience, the first thing you do you don't announce who you are. You don't say hello. You don't say, how are you? The first thing you do is just start talking. You either ask them a question or you start talking about something or I'm going to tell you how to do this. You, you, you do nothing else before you've 
started the, 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 the video because you have such a short period of time for people that don't know you now that you want to start out by giving them the desire to watch the rest of that video. And then you can go into, oh, by the way, hey, uh, um, but why is a frog? And uh, today we're going to talk about the best beer in town or I, I don't know, but, but first you pique their curiosity with something. Mm. Just a quick yeah. little. No, that's a nugget bomb. This is all your show, by the way. I would just, you know, <laughs> make oh, this. Ooh. This is your show. I'm just here <laughs> asking questions. So you've given us the tools of like Wave, uh, Kind Master. You talk about using elements that, you know, make it fun, make it interesting to watch. So, right, we've talked about, go ahead. Yeah, so I just I just wanted to say that for, for, for me, um, I'm actually, so we had that course, Tracy and I, and by the way, um, the way that that course came together, just uh, remember that I left that kind of in the loop, but um, it came together because we both had that vision that live video was not going to cut it for people, not in the same way, at least that it has been. And we both had that um, vision of story. Well, Tracy had a lot of the storytelling and I had a lot of the musicality and emojis and, and but we both kind of agreed on that. And um, and for me, if you're doing a video, there's kind of there's kind of four elements, main main basic elements. Um, it's the text. You can use text inside of, of um, your video. There's the picture. There's videos inside of videos. If you're doing little video clips and putting them together and maybe with some text and then there's the, the music and actually the sound because it, it can be music, but you can also put sound could also be you talking. Mm -hmm. So if you're showing pictures and you're talking and there's a little bit of text so people that doesn't have sound on can understand it, right? So there's, there's those four basic things you can play with and all of them have each their own ability to connect deeper with your audience than if you were just using, let's say one of them, let's say you were just a talking head like we are now. Hmm. But um, then you can go, I mean, if you're doing stuff like this, you can go back and you can repurpose this. Let's say um, you wanted to do a teaser. At one point, um, you might want to do a teaser or a um, bumper video for these chef's table and you can go in and you can take, you can either, you can do many funny things with these, but you can take some of the best advice that people have given or the funny laughs that has been there or whatever you want to portray in, in that particular video if you want to sort of promote it with a video. But then you can put funny sounds effect on to make it even more funny, you know, because that, that makes it just a little notch deeper. And then you can put the emojis that kind of goes with it um to if you want to make an entertainment we were talking about the infotainment thing so all of these little elements that you put on just to finish that loop is it that is a way an opportunity is what i want to say to connect deeper with your people and it all ties back to what we talked about with the brand that when you know who you're talking to you're also going to know a little bit more about how far you can take all the fun because you're going to know what kind of person it is. Will they love unicorns in their video or will they feel like it's a little bit over the top? Oh, yeah. Did everyone get value from that? Because I, I, you know, the one thing I love is that you just dropped a huge nugget bomb. Huge. It's right. kind of the foundation of a, a, a great video. Yeah. So what, so you put together your course and I'll make sure I mention that down here too. So you've got your video course that they can go through, you know, what makes your, you, your course so unique? Two things, hmm. because there are lots of video courses out there and some of them can tell you some of the same things, but the thing that is unique to me that I, I haven't seen it in any course yet <laughs> is that, um, both Tracy and I are, you know, very often when I see a video course, it's from someone that has a background in the creative side of creating a video, which is great because they have all these creative ideas, but then they don't have this strong um, marketing background, which Tracy and I both had. And then there's this special dynamic between Tracy and I 
as we discovered that she is super analytical mm. and I am highly creative. And that combination gives you a more full picture of what you want to think about when you're doing, because when you're doing video, you're not just doing a video to do a video. You're a marketer, you want to, and an entrepreneur, you, you are using this as a part of your strategy. And even though we want to have all the fun and connect with our audience, we do need to know all these foundations of marketing to actually be able to create a video that is effective. It's, it's not enough. I mean, you could create the, the greatest video in the history, you know, but if you don't have all those foundations of, um, how do I keep someone's attention? How do I actually get them to take some action at the end? Because it's great with a lot of viewers, but if they're not taking any action, how far have I really gotten with my video, depending on what you wanted to do with it, but still. So, um, so it's a whole picture mm. of what you want to do. It's not just a video, it's the whole marketing thinking and, um, mind game around the video and then the second thing is that there's the musicality which i haven't really seen anybody talk about i mean i've seen people talk about how you want to to drive emotions and have an intention with what kind of emotions you want people to feel do you want to have them laughing do you want to have them crying do you want to have them frustrated or angry but i've never seen anybody use the music which you know, as a dancer, I'm completely stunned that nobody has talked about this in marketing because it's so relevant. And I, I, um, I have a pet peeve with some of the commercials and most of the commercials on TV and a lot of the videos that I see online because they have generic, you know, songs, melodies on them. Mm. They're not really... They're not telling a story. They're not anything. They're just a beat and bass. And that does have it, its place, but not for every video you're doing. If you're doing a sad video, you don't want to have an oonch, oonch, oonch. <laughs> but I've seen that. And that's one of the things nice. that um, we're talking about in inside of the course. I'm actually talking about a little bit of musicality. Don't let yourself be scared away by it. It's just little basic things that we can all understand. And in, at the end, it's just a little bit of math. Yeah. Um, and, and then talking a little bit about also being interesting with your voice. When you're not on camera, you have to do a little bit of um, voice acting. You don't have to take a whole education, but just a little, just a few little principles that you can use if you really want your video to be super duper on point so that you can have that deep connection. And I really haven't seen anybody done do that. So that that's the two really unique things about our course. No, oh, I love it because it is, and I've gone through it. And I know that Tom mentioned that he's gone through it also. And it is a course that I think for the first time addresses the entire element of marketing, right? Um, and I think that's just one of the key elements. So I have a question for you around this one. Where do you place these types of videos? Where, where is the best, what's the best platform to have these, these types of videos on? The platforms where your audience is at. I know that's, that's a, ooh, that wasn't a, really the answer maybe you were hoping for, but it's true though. Um, you want to, and, and you really want to make sure that when you're doing videos that actually any kind of marketing, but but also with the videos that you're you're educating yourself around the, the politics and guidelines of the platform that you're using because um, different platform, different rules and mm -hmm. what is allowed on Facebook is not allowed on Pinterest and the other way around, just to mention too. Um, Instagram has some specific things and, and it's just really important that you know what kind of guidelines you're working from but, but basically, I mean, don't make a video for Instagram if your audience hangs out on LinkedIn. Um, so, it, so know where you're putting your video is really what you're kind of saying there. It's like, yeah. you know, make sure you understand the governing rules of video for each platform because they are different. Yeah, uh, they I, unfortunately, are. I know this, there's no two uh, places where you can put content <laughs> that is exactly the same. 
Nope. I and the good news, the good news, the really good news is that I haven't come across a platform yet. Not that I'm on everyone, every platform I'm not, but I haven't come across a platform yet where people are saying that video isn't great. Mm. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Like moment, every platform says, hey, yeah, video through, right? So yeah. You know, I know we're getting to the, the top of the hour here and thank you everybody for, you know, listening in and, and being a contribution to this conversation. Um, you know, one of the things is that, you know, you talked about mentorship and you talked about how you invested a lot into your education, right? And I know that as entrepreneurs, that's one of the best things that we can do, right? And, um, you know, with, with what we have here, I'm kind of a rebel. I don't know if you guys have noticed. What? Um, yeah, you're at chef's table. I mean, come on. If I wasn't out here creating crazy things, I'll have to tell you guys one time about this crazy dish I made that everybody still raves about today that everyone thought I was crazy for creating. Yay, fun. Um, yeah, that'll be another story for another time. But um, uh, around this, you know, I've been the, the the on the outside of talking Pinterest for good God, I think 18 months, right? So I've been sitting out there on the sidelines going Pinterest, Pinterest, you know, over and over again. And so, you know, what's really interesting, so you guys, you're, you're the first to know. So we're kind of letting the cat out of the bag here because we're officially announcing its uh, open doors uh, coming tomorrow, but we've made a, a few people an exclusive offer, which we'll go ahead and grant to you guys today. It's today only is the last day for this. But, you know, with what Michelle Felicia knows about videos, we have been c collaborating together, uh, collu co colluding behind your back. I think that's <laughs> something. We're, we've been totally deviously behind your back, working together, collaborating, planning, taking over the world, you know, that kind of entrepreneurial strategy mind that we have. But I've been really fascinated with what's been going on on Pinterest, especially in the world of video pins. Yes. Oh my God. Okay. So if I were to say a place where you could really do great with video, if your audience is there, you know, it's Pinterest, Pinterest. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's been crazy over there in a good way. Yeah. Cause I, well, and I'm going to tag into that. It's like, I know you and I, I'm just going to be straight up honest, Michelle. Like we know right now, Pinterest, the videos, I mean, I get an email, I think at least once a week that says, Hey, these are your top performing videos. Yeah. Like all the time. Like they're, I mean, I don't, I don't care if it's listening in. I'm just having a conversation with you, but Seriously, um, I get them all the time. It's like, hey, these are top performing videos. And that's the only thing they're really sending me. So they're telling me I'm getting, you know, my saves, right? But the only other email that's really caught my attention is that they're saying, hey, your video ads and your, or not even ads, they're just straight up organic video yeah. are yeah. performing extraordinarily well on this platform. They're getting views, they're getting clicks, they're getting slaves. And that's really without having done a lot on video and, and I've been kind of following you inside of the, the video branding of really being intentional with the types of pins I'm putting onto the Pinterest platform because I know they're going to be up there for a long time. Mm. So I want them to be found, but I also want them to go somewhere relevant. Right. right. And you definitely want that because yeah. yeah. So you know what what I did and I know Jeff some of you guys are jumping off and everything at the end of the tower. So before we wrap up so Michelle, Felicia, and I, and we've got a couple of other people actually bringing in some top trainers around this, but we are hosting a three-day Pinterest workshop. So the whole purpose of this is I'm, I'm actually flying Michelle Felicia in. I'm bringing her in as a special guest just for you guys so that you can actually work with her in developing your video pin structure for promoted pins. So the whole purpose of this uh, workshop, this Pinterest workshop, is to work with you side by side. So we're, you know, we've been talking about this. We're limiting this to like 15 people. And, you know, we are actually doing this in Florida. It's at a, um, a mansion. The, the greatest mansion I've ever seen, by yeah. the way. <laughs> I've been wanting, so, you know, being a chef, there's this one mansion that's in Florida um, that I have been wanting to do an event at. I can't tell you how long. The moment I saw this, I think I've been drilling over this mansion for like four years. And I, you know, Michelle Felicia and I were talking and we said, no, this is the place. Like you couldn't pick a better place to get creative, a better place to have some fun. Literally. Right. Like this is going to knock your socks off just to be able to stay there for, you know, this entire event. So you're going to be staying in there where we're bringing in the food. 
All you got to do is show up and we'll train you. We'll feed you and we'll show you the time of your life. Cause I promise and you at the same time, you know, make sure you walk out with, you know, videos you can use pictures you can use. I'm, 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 I'm going to bet that you have pictures and videos worth for the rest of your year that, you know, of this year. Yeah. So that, so I'm going to put the link down in here for, for those of you that are, you know, wanting to see that. So definitely check back onto this channel as I, as I fill out the description to make sure you guys have all that information, but this really is going to be, in all honesty, this will be the first event for Pinterest for 2020. Um, I'm, I'm my next event for this. I'm actually looking to do it out of the country. So this might be the only time inside of the United States that this event takes place. Yeah, because uh, I want to take this uh, around because I really do see the value. And I honestly, you know, anybody that's ever gone to workshops, you know how valuable they are. Yeah. I mean, they, they 10 time, 100 time your, you know, the, the rate of your success because you have the ability to work with people that know and can help you like take action right then and there. Any question you have, guess what? It's getting answered. And I think the unique thing about what we put together is that there's going to be so much action involved. I, I don't know. Have, I mean, have you ever been at a workshop where, you know, you've learned so much and it's been super great and your brain was like melting and then you come home and you've learned all this stuff, but your everyday life is still the same and implementing these new things, you know, learning all these new things are going to require new habits which hint, hint, you can watch uh, the previous <laughs> chef's table to, to, to learn more about habits, but habits are kind of the glue that holds us all together. And so if you can start those habits at the workshop and actually take the action and get that, I think sometimes it's taking that first step. There's something psychological about taking the first step. So if you don't have to take the first step when you get home but you take it while you're there while having fun you already trained yourself that okay this new way is not dangerous in any, any way and you can it's, it's going to be less of a challenge to go home and take action on the things you need to take action on i just know i've, I've been at workshops where there wasn't a lot of action involved and i came home and i was kind of overwhelmed and i didn't do as much as i should have so yeah, so basically we're going to make this actionable for you. You will have a total hands-on implement as you go kind of thing. So we've got about 90 seconds here, sure. right? So I really do want to thank you guys. For those of you that click on the link, if you're watching it live today on the 6th of January, you're going to get a special deal. If you're watching this after that, you're going to get uh, a still an incredible deal to come to this event. I mean, seriously, I'm, I feel like I'm giving it away because this is yeah. how, this is how much I want you guys to learn Pinterest is that I'm doing it at such a, a low cost because I want to get you there so that you excel. Um, but in that, Michelle, how, Michelle, Felicia, how can people find you? Where is the best place to contact you? Where is the best place to follow you, learn more, and just really, you know, get a sense of what you're up to as we head into this workshop that's coming up in March. Um, what, where can they meet you? Where's the best place to, to follow you or stalk you on social media? Yeah, so I would say that the, the very best place is actually at, at my blog, justfelicia.me. Uh, so <laughs> hopefully that's not confusing to anyone, but uh, that's that's where I hang out a lot. And then um, I am on Pinterest, which is the same thing, just Felicia me. There's just no dot, but exact same thing. And that's where I'm, I'm currently hanging out a lot. I'm a little bit on Facebook and a little bit here and there, but those are the two places where you can be sure to find me every day and say, hey, I have a question or, hey, I wanna check something out. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Well, thank you guys also, like I said, in the description down below, you guys will find this. We are you know, here on YouTube and this will be turned into a podcast also. So for our future podcasters, this will be available for you also. Um, Michelle Felicia, thank you so much for your time today. I know that you're extremely busy with what you've got going on your plate, working with your clients, working with those that are going through your course. Um, so if you haven't had a chance and you're watching and you, you haven't had a chance to grab our course, please do so. It is amazing. The link will be down below also. Um, but I, it's just been an honor and a privilege to, to spend this, you know, time at the chef's table, uh, just giving you, I mean, you've, you've dropped so many nugget bombs. You've been very straightforward and truthful with us. And, you know, thank you for everything. It's been an honor to have you here on today's show. 
thank you for having me and for everything that you have done, you know, in my journey as well. It's been, it's been a privilege and I'm so honored that we're going to do this workshop. It's going to be, it's going to be amazing. All right. With that, everybody, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for hanging out with us at the chef's table and we'll see you next week. Same time, same place. And we'll bring in on another special guest that's going to blow your mind around what it looks like to be an entrepreneur. Talk soon, everybody.